Hey guys, okay, so this past weekend was the Cup of Russia, also known as a Rostellum Com Cup. Um, starting off, I'm going to start with the men's and just work my way through, and then since I'm actually on schedule now, I can do my predictions for the Trophy Air Bombard, which is like the Cup of France, I guess, um, technically. But I'll just get started. For the men's in the short, it was kind of obvious, it's like, that Patrick was going to pwn this event, but then a lot of people were saying that he might not be at his A game anymore because of how he did so bad in Japan Open and like he only got second in Canada. But in the short, he took it by over 10 points over Konstantin Menshaw from Russia. And at the, I'd have to applaud Konstantin for getting second in the short because he's, I think he's like 28 or something. And a lot, and the Russian Federation have been counting him out for the past little while because the, all the, like, the spotlight's been on Evgeny Kloshenko and like, um, I won't put Artur Gaginski because he was third about at the Worlds about two years ago. Um, he, Konstantin Menshov was, I think he was fourth at Skate America, and a lot of people were rooting for him because he does have the elements. He's just not comp componently strong enough to compete with the rest of the men. But I think with this men's field, it's kind of iffy. Um, Taki Kozuka would have been my second choice to have been in second in the short, but. He um, had a messy quad toe, which is also under-rotated, a messy triple axel, which left him in third, but less than a point behind Menshov. And then um, the rest of the men's field, I was kind of expected, except for Nobrani Oda, who singled his triple axel, tripled the quad in his quad triple combination, leaving him in eighth after the short after coming off of a third-place finish at Skate Canada, so that's a little bit depressing on his part. And then Johnny Weir, which a lot of people were saying would have been, this would have been his debut internationally, and a lot of people were really excited about it because, like, hey, Johnny Weir, like, yeah. And, like, I he skated to Bad Romance, Bad Romance? No, Poker Face, Poker Face by Gaga, and it was a good performance, but um, it wasn't but like his elements, because he fell on his quad toe, which was also double downgraded into a triple toe, minus the GOE, so it left him with like nothing at that point. Um, his triple let's triple toe combination ends up being a triple double let's double toe combination, which doesn't make much, and also because he, and then he, and it wasn't clean either, um, and he landed in 10th after the short, and then withdrew because of a hip injury that has been affecting him. So that is the sad side of that. Um, in the free, Patrick, do I have to say more? Um, he beat Nobrani Oda by 22 points. Yeah, I'm not sure whether that'd be over, overscored or underscored yet. Hmm. Honestly, I want to say he's overscored, but not gonna lie, his free program. It's probably one of the best I've seen so far, other than, um, I'd say the Phantom performance. I'd say that was, like, other than that one, this one is really showing his strong suit, and he's really matured a lot, and when he works with Kathy Johnson, she really focuses on movement, and I find that for men, even though they put a lot of oomph into their steps, into their step sequences, they're kind of more rigid, and they, and they don't want to be expressive because they don't want to come off as gay. Well, for some reason, Patrick, Queen, he doesn't come off as gay, which is kind of cool. I don't know how he does it, but I've never gotten that vibe from him. And even though he's a girlfriend, um, he shows off, like, he, he's kind of like, he's like a bridge, I guess, but he's he's definitely seems straight in that sense, which, hey, who doesn't want? Um, no, Barney Oda bounced back from his eighth place short and took second in the free, not without mistakes, because... He fell on his opening quad toe, um, and he was under rotated on a triple sow cow, which is like what? Um, if you can do a, if you do a quad, how can you under rotate a triple? But that's not the that's not the point. Um, I don't think it was enough for him to take the any meddling at all. But he did go up to fifth overall, so hey, why not? Um, Takahiko Kozuka, who was third and third in the short and the free, was able to take second overall even though his free program was filled with errors, including both of his quad toes being downgraded, and he fell on one of them, and then, and also he missed a sequence of one too, and uh, he had a messy 
um, three jumping, uh, like a three jumping pass, and had the triple toe on the back end of a triple triple combination downgraded again, or as commonly shown. And third place in the end went to Mika Brazina, who beat Constantine Menchel out of the meddling, which was depressing because, like, I want to hit the medal. Like, I wouldn't say he's very strong. This, like, I wouldn't say he's strong enough to make, like, any decent presence on the world stage yet. But he has potential. And I mean, hey, if you can do a quad of 28, like, I have to, like, that's serious props right there. Uh, and I'm talking way too much. Okay, um, in the ladies. Oh my gosh, it's been, like, five minutes. Okay. Um, in the ladies. Gracie Gold takes short, and that's where she should be because after her performance at Skate Canada, I was like, ah! Um... Her triple flip, triple toe had a edge call, but nonetheless was still clean. Um, Kira Corpy was second in the short with a clean short program with no triple triple combination though. And Agnes Zawatsky, who had a clean short, including a triple lut and a triple triple combination to top it off, but had a faulty spin. But aside from that, um, um, broke 60 and. Uh, a lot of people were saying that she's really improved, in, including she took third last year at Nationals and was kind of, like, unknown the while. But who I was expecting to do really well were the Russians, as, as Ali, Alina Leonova, who was a silver medalist at the World Championships last year. Her, she did a waxel. Um, her triple-triple combination was validated, but that waxel just killed her, and her uh, component scores weren't good enough to help her break 60 Adlina Sonikova, who's one of the Russian phenoms, that's not really a phenom anymore because she's like a senior now, but she singled a triple flip, which was enough to kill the points so that she wouldn't be remotely in meddling position. And then the rest from there was expected, I guess. Kanaka Murakami came six, which I mean, ugh. She did so well at Skate, at Skate America, and I really like her as a, as a skater. Her jumping, her jumping um, style is a little unorthodox, but hey, she gets the jumps down. She can do a triple triple with ease. So I, so that's something that I need to be proud of about. And Kira Corpy takes the free, even though she did fall on her triple soul triple loop, and had a edge call on her triple flip. Still did a triple triple combination in her free, and it was enough to strike gold and Gracie gold, ironically took silver with a messy free program, edge call on her flip, both flips actually, and her and she doubled a triple loop, doubled a triple lutz, and uh, doubled the triple toe and a double axle triple toe combination, or was it double axle, double toe, double loop? Well, regardless, she did a double axle, double loop, single, a double axle, Double toe, single loop. So, uh, I don't know about that. And then in the th and then Kanaka Murakami tried to redeem herself, but it wasn't good enough, and wasn't able to beat Agnes out of getting into third place, where Agnes um, beat Kanako by just less than 0. 0.2 points. Yeah. And Caroline unfortunately got in tenth. And I have to mention Caroline because I actually like her as a skater, and I'm really depressed that she's not doing well in the. Grand Prix like she did when she was younger. Blech. And then in the pairs, it was kind of obvious who was going to win in this sense. Um, Tatiana Volos and Maxi Trenkov had been so strong that it wouldn't have been, it, it's not even competition. Like they're out of the, they're everyone else's league. They're, they got 74 points in their shorts and they beat their Russian teammates, Bazarova and Larinov, by 8 points. And, it was, and then Katie Denny and John Colin were able to hold on to third after the short, and the Canadians not far behind. But then in the free, it pretty much stayed the same, except for, like, the bottom two. But, like, if you see, like, the rankings, they the short and the free were pretty much the same overall. So, and even, like, the number gaps are, like, significantly different. So there wasn't much, much of a... It was kind of predicted, like, what was going to happen, I guess. And then in the short dance... Virtue and Moyer, um, they had a good short except, and they did up their um, levels now too, 
except they did get a level 2 and a level 3, and they should be getting level 3s and level 4s, or even both level 4s, so they should probably work on that part, maybe fix some things that they need to f get the higher levels for, and then Russians, Elena Ilinov and Nikita Kasalov, Katsalapov from Russia um, were five points behind them, but still with a clean short dance, and then another Russian, Victoria Sisnia and Rushen Ziga, Ziganshin from Russia, they were the juniors who, I think they won Junior Worlds, I'm not mistaken, last year, so that's a good start for them. But then in the free, um, they were not able to hold in the third place and were fourth in the free, but were still able to hold on to third overall because Maya Shibatani and Alex Shibatani, who were fourth overall, did not have a good free dance, nonetheless still got fifth in the free dance, so that just shows how good they are because um, Alex kind of had muscle spasms because they did a free dance to Memoirs of a Geisha, which I thought was so pretty. The actual, the actual free dance was so well choreographed. But then when she, he was about to pick her up, he's like, oh, no, never mind. Because I think his leg was acting up and he want to, like, pick up her sister and, like, drop her. Because, you know, that'd be bad. Like, family. You live with this girl. If you drop her, that's the good thing. She's she going gonna, she gonna, she gonna to kill him later. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah. And that's pretty much it for the Cup of Russia. Most of it wasn't... Most of it was kind of very decided. There wasn't much of a... Con it wasn't really, wasn't really much of a competition, I guess. In some ways, like you kind of knew how it was going to be set up. But before this video becomes even longer than it is, um, Trophy Air Bombard is now my predictions. Not, not much in the men's. I want to say Jeremy Abbott, but then he didn't do well in It's Gain America. But Brian Joubert also withdrew from the Cup of China, so it's kind of iffy. So those two may or may not be on the podium. I really can't say who. Foreign Amodio was fourth in Skin Canada, so I might so he should be on the podium, but I can't I don't know what place he'll be on. In the ladies, it's either the US or the United States. I mean the US or Russia, I cannot talk. Um US Chris, Ashley Wagner and Christina Gao are both strong skaters. Ashley won Skate America, so she will likely take gold here. But Julia was second to Maosada, even though Julia did win the short, so those two are definitely going head to head for gold. Elizabeth Tukamishiva um, she did not do well at Skate Canada, but is now nonetheless a very strong skater, so I might see her on the podium, maybe. In the pairs, Kavagudi and Smirnoff pretty much have this thing in the bag. Second place will probably Megan do Hamill, Eric Radford, unless the Russians really fuck up. And then Kinesia, Stobova, and Fedor Kimilov from, also from Russia, they should get third. Either that, no, I lied, not them. Um, Italy, Steph, I cannot, I can, I'm going blind. Italy, Stefanie Berton, and Andrej Hotarek should take third, as they took third at their last Grand Prix. Um, and then in dance, Natalie Peschelot and Fabian Borzat should take this easily. Anna Capolini and Luca Lanotte from Italy should take a close second and will fight Peschelot and Borzat for that gold, for sure. Ekaterina Rizanova and Ilya Tashenko from Russia will definitely be trying to get to first or second because of how strong they've become, but I'm not sure if they're good enough yet to beat Capellini Lanotte. And then a wild Kirby, Piper Chisholm Papoy, because they do have a lot of talent, but they may not be able to make a podium appearance just yet. And I'm going to shut up now because this thing is way too long. I'll see you guys later.